Hello everyone, uh, Dr. Vaughn here, and we're going to continue on with the videos about Worksheet 2. This time we're looking at Part 2, Questions 1 through 3. The first thing you're going to want to do is enter your name up here where it says in cell F1, where it says Joe Lope. Change this to your actual name. What this is going to do is it's going to change the data set that you have over here on the left, and it's going to make it unique to you. So everyone should have a different data set over here. Uh, now you're going to uh, follow the directions that are up over here. So to, to do this descriptive statistics for the data in the table provided, and then remember that you need to uh, write some narrative over here. So the first thing we're going to look at is the min, max, mean, standard deviation, sample size, and the zero count. So the min, uh, as before, is just equals min, parentheses, and we're going to just click and drag through the cells that we want to actually find the, the minimum of. And so for this first one, for the before wells, it's... Uh, from row two all the way down to, I think it's row 101. And then I'm going to do close parentheses and then enter. So what this, uh, what this did is it took that um, data range from B2 through B101 and it's giving it that title, which is before. And so now I can use that title before for all of these other formulas. The minimum value over here was zero. Now the max. So I'm going to say equals max parentheses, and then I can just type that word before, and then close parentheses. So the largest value here is 110. The mean equals average. From the before column, close parentheses. Uh, the standard deviation equals stdev.s, the sample standard deviation of the before. And the sample size, for this one you can use equals count. That's just counting how many values you have. And then I can write the word before. Should turn out to be 100. Um, you could set this to be an integer. I don't think it really matters whether you have the decimals on here or not. Now the zero count. So for this one we're going to do equals count if parentheses. The range is the cells that we're calling before. And then the criteria, so comma, the criteria is going to be, quote, um, equals zero, close quote. So we're counting how many things meet this criterion of equaling zero. And you can see that on the before column, there are three zeros. Some of you might get zero here. Some of you might get more than three. Some of you might get less than three. Let's go ahead and count them manually just to make sure that it's working properly. Here's one, two, three. So there are three zeros in the column of data, which is the before wells. All right, so next we're going to do all the same thing for the after wells. I think that you could just do equals min, use the word after, close parentheses, equals max after, equals average after, equals stdev.s after and sample size so equals count after and then the zero count equals count if the after column of data comma and then the criterion is equal zero put that in quotes and then close parentheses for the end of the equals count if function Okay, so there were three zeros in the before, there were seven zeros in the after. You can go through and just verify this. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, now we got to do the uh, ratio of the percent clean. Don't forget to type um, some kind of a response over here. The question is, uh, decide if it appears there's been an improvement in water quality. So I'm not going to write this in this video, but you should make sure that you write a, a couple of sentences of narrative here. In my case, the count of zeros went from three to seven. So that would be an indication that before we only had three um, wells that had no E. coli in it. Afterwards, we had seven wells that had no E. coli in it. Um, however, um, the mean... Uh, also went down, so the mean number of E. coli 
um, per, millions of E. coli per milliliter before was 54, after was 35. And um, again, the so it does seem the standard deviation has also shrunk a little bit. So, so in in my case, in every in every um, descriptive statistic, it does appear to be that there has been an improvement in water quality. Not only has the mean gone down, but the standard deviation is also smaller, which means there's a smaller range of variance for the number of E. coli that are in the wells from the mean. So, uh, you know, you could think of this in terms of a confidence interval. Um, all I'm saying for now is that make sure that when you write your narrative description as a response to question one on this sheet, that you make reference to the mean and the standard deviation. You may choose to look at the zero count, but you must make reference to the mean and standard deviation of the data in your narrative description about why the wells have or have not, in some cases, gotten better. So based upon your name and based upon some of the data sets, there are cases where it actually hasn't gotten any better. In my case, it has. So watch out and make sure you um, respond for your set of data. All right, now we're going to go on to the next part. The water quality is considered good if the E. coli is zero. Otherwise, the water quality is still bad. All right, so we want to do the proportion or the percent that's clean. And the clean is going to be the ones that are uh, the zero counts, right? So uh, to compute the proportion or the ratio and then convert it into a percent of the clean wells to the total number of wells, we want the, um, the, the proportion of wells with good water to wells whose water is not good. Uh, so this is a, a ratio. It doesn't really seem to be the quite the same as the percent clean because that would be a, a part to a whole sort of relationship. So I'm going to do what I think that they've asked us to do, which is that ratio of clean wells to non-clean wells. All right, so uh, we're going to do in the numerator of the proportion the number of clean wells, which is the same as this count of how many zero E. coli wells there were. So that's the numerator or the first part of this ratio of clean wells to not clean wells. Now we're going to divide by, and for the denominator, what I need to do is take the total number of wells and subtract the clean wells, because that would be the non-clean wells. Now this is easy to do on our heads, because we have the sample size of 100 and a zero count of 3. But I want to use formulas as much as possible in case that my data are going to change. So I'm going to start with the uh, total sample size, which is in cell F7. And I'm going to subtract the number of clean wells, which is in cell F8. And that'll give me the number of non-clean wells, which is the denominator or the second part of this particular ratio. Right, so I have a, a 0 0.03 ratio of clean wells to non-clean wells, about 3 out of 100, a little bit more, which is, you know, it's really 3 out of 97, but um, that, that simplifies to this number as a decimal. Now, if I wanted to express this as a percent, then I could use this percent sign. But... I really think that uh, we should probably just leave this as here because there seems to be a, a uh, all right, well, I'm going to change my mind. So I'm sorry about this. I don't really want to re-record re this video. So I'm just going to go now with uh, over here. It says calculate the percent clean for the before and the after in the instruction. So I think that instead of this uh, proportion of good wells from good to not good, we're going to do the proportion of wells with good water to the total number of wells. So we'll go back and just change this to the F8 divided by the total number of wells, the total sample size, which is F7. And then I'm going to express this cell as a percent. So there's 3% of the wells, 3 out of 100 that are clean. And in the after case, I'm going to do equals the zero count here divided by the total and also express that as a percent. So we went from 3% clean to 7% clean. All right, now for the last part, again, you need to um, uh, write something here. So based on this measure of the percent clean, does it appear that the water quality of water has improved? In my case, again, I think the answer here would be yes. Uh, I've gone from 3% clean wells to 7% clean wells, and that definitely is um, a, um, mark of improvement from, from uh, digging these wells. All right, so, so now we're going to do this last part, which is about the um, conversion. So 
we're going to look at well number one. Uh, so not the average, just the first well in this um, in this data set. And if I drank 24 ounces of water from well number one in the before and after, how many E. coli, not millions of E. coli, how many E. coli would you ingest if you drank before the mission and after the mission? All right, so what I need to do is take this number right here, which is 2 million E. coli per milliliter, and I need to convert that into ounces um, and then I need to convert that into 24 ounce glasses of water. All right, so uh, in order to, I'm gonna start with this, which is in units of, so I'm sorry, I need to type equals. I'm gonna start with this, which is in millions of E. coli per milliliter. And now I'm gonna multiply by milliliters and divide by ounces. So multiply by the milliliters. and divide by one, which I don't need to put into my formula. So now I have um, millions of E. coli per ounce. Uh, now I'm gonna convert this into just E. coli instead of millions of E. coli. So there's one million E. coli in a million E. coli. So I'm gonna multiply by one million. And finally, I need to convert this as ounces. This is million, this is E. coli per ounce. And now I need to figure out how many are in 24 ounces of water. So this is for every one ounce. And so I'm gonna multiply by 24 to get how many there are in a 24 ounce glass of water. So the E. coli before is B2 times E15, which is the conversion factor for milliliters to ounces, times 1 million times 24. This is gonna be a very big number. Now, uh, for me, it's it's not as big as for some of you. You might get a number that has the e times e to the, which is times 10 to the power of. Uh, for us, that's still a lot of E. coli, but uh, then again, our well only had 2 million as opposed to 60 or 70 or 56, in which case this number would be much, much bigger. All right, and finally, for the E. coli after, we're gonna do basically the same thing. We're gonna take the equals, and now the E. coli, millions of E. coli per milliliter after, we're gonna multiply that by the conversion factor. We're gonna multiply that by the 1 million. And we'll multiply that by the 24 to convert it into 24 ounce glasses of water. So there's that E plus 10. So that means uh, times 10 to the power of 10, which means shifting this decimal point 10 places to the right if you wanted to write it as a number without a decimal point in it. So in, in well number one, um, this, this uh, well got worse. It got worse by far, right? So before the wells were dug, there was only 2 million E. coli per milliliter, and after there were 52. This well got, got far worse, and uh, by digging the well in this particular case, we've increased our exposure to E. coli. All right, so you should probably type a little bit of narrative here. It just says, how, how would you ingest be, before and after? Um, I would add a little narrative here. Um, I, it doesn't appear to be required because it says it doesn't have the answer here, but I'd say, you know, in this case, by looking at just well number one, you know, the water quality did not improve. Uh, although up here in response one and in response two, we concluded that overall, for the 100 different wells that we were looking at, the pattern was that most of them actually improved. All right, uh, that's it for this video. I'm gonna stop recording at this point and I'll see you in the next one for the last part of part two, questions 14.